was held in the spring of 1974. Our focus at this time was the development of a project-oriented curriculum for teaching programming. The students made use of illustrated project books, each of which presents a model of a small talk class definition that can be modified and extended. An example model is a definition of a box class. The program you are now seeing is probably the first example of a tool built by a child. It is a painting system based on selecting a set of paintbrushes of various geometric shapes. The shapes are displayed in a menu at the top of the screen. The ability to manipulate polygons is a simple extension of the box model. Marion went on to write a small talk definition of the class human. This is an example of the power of organizing objects into class definitions according to their ability to act the same. The small talk kernel idea of classifying objects according to ability with possibly different valued properties provides a very powerful method for controlling programmed objects. You are watching a dance routine that Marion wrote in order to demonstrate the control she has over all parts of the object. Marion also makes fun use of variable line width to draw and in reverse to undraw the stick figure. We have been able to expand the use of the kids' work in order to make films about our personal computing ideas. The movie excerpt we have chosen to show next is a good example of the integration of music and animation of the shows the kids can stage. Elementary School participated in a summer program in which we transported the children to a specially prepared resource area at the Xerox Research Center. these nine-year-old boys. They extended a square drawing program to programs for drawing and redrawing triangles, circles, and stars. Uh-oh. 
The idea behind robotic input and output devices for preschoolers is to provide concrete objects that carry out sequential commands, objects whose actions a child can map directly to his own behavior. The computer serves as an integrator, accessible via physical devices at proper motor skill levels. With such devices, we can introduce concepts of storing repeatable instructions and begin to wean the child the notations of programming languages. The music editing system is under constant revision in an attempt to find a comfortable user interface for editing notes and timbres. This is an excerpt from a movie we made about computer music. The star, Rachel, has played piano since she was five years old. Corrects her mistake with the note editor. At age six, Rachel began Suzuki method violin lessons. The Suzuki philosophy is to introduce children early to music and art skills, developing the necessary motor skill dexterity and hand-eye coordination, and making the learning of these skills as natural a part of the child's development as our language skills. Our own pedagogical philosophy is to make thinking and design skills just as natural a part of a child's cognitive development. decided to teach her own class of seventh graders. Throughout our work, we have encouraged and emphasized the value of peer teaching in order to give a child experience in describing ideas and problems and in trying to understand the descriptions of other students. These excerpts from Marion's class attempt to display the resource center model that we have designed, emphasizing a variety of methods for planning, describing, implementing, and self-evaluating. In addition to a number of personal computers, printing, and other computer control devices, the environment includes conventional audiovisual equipment, such as blackboards and cameras, as well as plastic models of, say, the coordinate system of the display screen. 
We work in large group sessions in which a student or teacher explains some new concept or technique or reviews an already presented one. Small group sessions let the students work together in pairs to design a system. Individual work times are always encouraged. The long attention span that we have often witnessed has gone beyond our expectations of the captivating nature of the graphics programming tools we have built. starships in a game like shooting ducks. Black background is a fun variation the kids enjoy using. Lisa's game consists of boxes whose lids open up. Out pops a design related to the box's secret code number. The code corresponds to a keyboard character that the player has to guess. Lisa was able to integrate her interest in line drawing designs into an extension of the box class. Note the importance of the presentation needed to make the game fun, easy to use, and enticing for her fellow classmates. This notion of making something that your friends will want to use, use, not just watch, is an important criterion for the kids' designs. The kids learn how to send messages to objects in small talk in a variety of ways. We have seen typing, pointing with the display cursor, and pressing mouse buttons. Another method is to build a menu, a display of message options. An example text menu is shown in this picture construction system. By placing the cursor on the appropriate message and pressing a mouse button, the user sends a message to make a shape grow, turn, draw, undraw, and change the thickness of its outline. It is possible to move the shape and to make a copy of it. These are all capabilities Susan provided in her extension of the class box. Susan easily integrated Dan's halftone paint program into her system in order to be able to add paint tones to the constructed pictures. Again, making use of the kids' work, we made a movie. This time, we used Susan's picture construction tool and a badminton simulation that Marion wrote. Both were revised for the color small talk system. For example, Marion modified her class human to include skin color and background color and to hold badminton rackets. each student in Marion's class picked another seventh grader to teach. Probably one of the more significant aspects of our program has been this sharing of knowledge, encouraged by the peer teaching format. The next sequence of projects demonstrates some of the work these new students accomplished. Pong was implemented by two students, Elliot and Sandy. They scheduled paddle moves according to input from the keyboard and kept a running score. Bruce's Space War is an excellent example of the extension of the control over the members of the box class. Each box is now shaped like a triangle. It is a spaceship that is able to move forward and backwards, turn left and right, move slow or fast. 
They shoot rockets which, if one hits another ship, explodes it. In a subsequent class, another space war was written, this time making use of text character design in order to have characters that look like ships or rockets moving at right angles to the display screen. Robert's non-sequential scheduling methods provide for simulations in which both ships are destroyed. During the winter of 1975, we also held Saturday classes for the children of Xerox employees. The purpose was to give the kids a chance to see some of the tools their parents use at work. Scott designed this blackjack game. It makes nice use of the menu idea for selecting messages and extends the notion of a box as an area for holding information, in this case, about a playing card. In the fall of 1975, we held two classes at Park, one about the computer's role in society and one on creating animations. In the animation class, students used a text editor to plan their animated movies. They then used the Smalltalk animation system to make drawings and define movement sequences. The movies that you are seeing were prepared by these students. Projects begin with two-frame movies, or blinks. Multiple frame movies are made by painting two or more pictures and then having the system cycle through the pictures at eight frames per second. Showing a frame more than once gives the impression of slower movement. The two clock examples demonstrate what happens when the order of the frames is reversed. There are also movies defined as a single object traversing a path. The student draws the single object. He then uses the mouse to show the system a path the object should follow. Complex movies are composed by superimposing one sequence of pictures over another. Often we will take pictures drawn by different students in order to compose a complete animation, or we will have different students draw, under some design constraint, one frame of a multiple frame sequence. Learning should be fun, and we continually emphasize the humor possible in combining objects, such as pictures, in unusual ways. We are also interested in animation as a means of placing familiar objects into strange or unusual settings as a part of our efforts to teach kids to understand and to construct metaphors. In the spring of 1976, we placed the Smalltalk system in an open classroom environment. This five-month experience served as a pilot study for transferring our Learning Resource Center model into a typical school environment. The model was located in the Jordan Junior High School Independent Study Center. Because the computers were located in the school, the students were able to gain access to the systems more frequently and for shorter periods than were previously possible. Almost 100 students utilized the center's resources, 53 of whom were in formally organized courses.
teaching small talk programming was embedded in three new curriculums. A simulation class was devised. It focuses on the development of mechanisms for carrying out abstractions of physical activities. The course begins with a model of a simple list of objects, in this case, circular bubbles floating randomly around the display screen. The bubble class is a definition easily extended to represent other objects floating about. Letters, numbers, snowflakes, designs, polygons. Changing the representation of the bubble begins a study of line drawing and text presentation. Next, we introduce methods for modifying lists through a model of a bubble bursting when it gets too near another bubble. Here we focus on the implications of the decisions, such as the definition of near and the model of how bubbles will burst on contact. Scheduling methods are discussed for simulating sequential and parallel processes. We then use lists of objects to create races of cars, horses, and swimmers beginning an exploration of the idea of collecting statistics on the simulated environment. In Bruce's car race, he randomly selects which car will move a fixed distance. He uses rectangles to represent the cars. Scott starts his car race by providing a probability for how often car number one will move. He weights the random number selection on this probability. Denise incorporated into her car race a clock to represent simulated time. During each click of the clock, each car gets to move some distance within set limits. This method means that it is possible to have a tie in the race. Denise shows two winners in a special window at the bottom of the display screen. The simulation class was the first time we know of that young students designed a data structure. You are seeing Troy's version of a waiting line class. It is a method for having objects join a line, leave the line, cut into the line, or get service on a first-in, first-out basis. The class proceeded to study methods of chained lists, learning about the tool Simpula. It is a scheduling mechanism for building simulations of dynamic environments such as hospitals and classrooms. We are seeing a sample run of a hospital simulation that was shown to the students. They examined it to determine the kinds of information they could obtain from the abstract machine representation. The objects in the simulated environment are hospitals, departments, staff, patients who walk through corridors to get to department desks, waiting rooms, and staff attention. It is possible to point to one of these objects in order to learn what it is, its history and or its immediate future. Troy has already made use of the Simpula model in order to begin his study of the use of rides at the Great America Amusement Park. The graphics class was designed to make students aware of the possibilities of high-resolution computer graphics. Basically, they study methods for line drawing, text presentation and editing, use of halftones to give the impression of color or texture, and a variety of methods to make pictures move on the screen. Design problems and graphic layout for communicating aesthetically are discussed. The ultimate goal is to have the students design their own painting and animation tools. Often a student from the graphics class teamed up as the idea person with a student who could program, thus forming a very productive research team. The final product of the art produced was very often not as interesting as the process of getting that product. 
the real art was a process art as invented by these students. Students in the geometry class were given class definitions for point, line, triangle, and circle. They could create a triangle and then make designs by changing the vertices of the triangle. Here one vertex moves to follow the cursor and form a design. Members of the class triangle respond to messages such as bisect side one. We compute the point of intersection of two lines by sending one line the message intersect. A circle that circumscribes the triangle is then formed. Its center is the point where the two bisecting lines intersected. Its radius is equal to the distance from the center to the triangle vertex. To inscribe a circle in a triangle, we must bisect two angles of the triangle. Bisection of an angle is accomplished by forming an isosceles triangle with the angle and part of its two adjacent sides. The line that bisects the new base also bisects the desired angle. The intersection of the two bisectors then provides the center of the circle that is inscribed in the triangle. The radius is measured as the distance from the center to a side of the original triangle. One of the less tangible sides of our work at Jordan was the enthusiasm for the research-oriented approach to curriculum, having students and teachers function as colleagues. With both student and teacher taking on roles as active learners, the students feel free to fantasize, explore, make mistakes, and in general be highly creative in their use of the new Well, I'm Joan Dufrain from Jordan Junior High School, and I'm going to show you how to create an animation on the Shazam Smalltalk animation system. Here are two movies I made. The first is a frog catching a fly. The second is a goose flying. I combine these two movies and a background to make a fuller movie. another movie I made called Gallop. It, it's a horse galloping. I can write a program that has the horse galloping across the screen. The screen. Here's the horse again. <coughs> and now I have a jockey. I can superimpose the jockey on the horse to make a race horse. Okay. Now I can have the jockey and the horse run across the screen, screen by making another program. Now I can have the horse and the jockey run across the screen in front of a stadium. This is the complete movie. Oh, <laughs> oh,